We have more tonight on a story that we first brought to you last month. There is new evidence of the negative impact of overpopulation on our environment. The biggest threat to the environment isn't, it turns out, gas guzzling cars or power plants, but rather having too many children all around the world. Casey Wyan with our report. The cheapest way to stop global climate change is not converting to solar power or buying a hybrid car. It's putting on a condom. That's the conclusion of a London School of Economics study showing that money spent on contraception is about five times more efficient than money spent on clean energy technologies. It backs up a recent Oregon State University study that concludes overpopulation is the single biggest threat to the environment. It's been a lot of attention to the effects of individuals' lifestyle choices, uh, things like transportation, food choices, and so on, but relatively little attention to the effect of having children. The British Medical Journal and Lancet last week both published an editorial stating that the sensitive issue of population stabilization continues to slip off the agenda, but is crucial to achieving real reductions in global CO2 emissions. There is a, a large body of scientific evidence that is showing that there are many links between population factors and um, climate change as well as many other in environmental issues, but climate change especially. Supporters of the idea are not advocating laws that would restrict individual family planning choices or encourage government funding of birth control. They do want both developed and developing nations to at least discuss the issue. Rapidly rising population is a greater threat in third world nations, while the environmental impact of each child in developed countries is greater because they use much more energy. People should be made aware of uh, both by the environmental organizations and by the um, uh, media that it's good for a couple to stop at two or fewer non-adopted children. And, uh, and then to outline some of the, the good environmental things that would accrue. Yet many environmental groups are reluctant to tackle the issue. So is the United Nations, which is overseeing global climate change negotiations. One barrier, cultural sensitivities. The Washington Post reports it asked a U.N. official about family planning and the environment, and the official replied that, quote, to bring the issue up would be an insult to developing countries. President Obama plans to speak at the U.N. tomorrow about climate change in advance of a global conference on the issue in December. Scholars who are concerned about the role overpopulation plays in climate change are still hoping for a seat at the table during those talks. Lou. Yeah, I mean, what we're really talking about here is, and you can just almost hear the shudders of political, uh, politically correct quarters all over the country as you report on that, as we bring, uh, bring that uh, knowledge to the American public. Uh, because there are such hidebound uh, orthodoxies in this country, ideological, partisan, politically correct uh, uh, constraints on, on minds in this country. Uh, that's the real problem here, isn't it? Absolutely. The scholars we talk to say it's been absolutely ignored by the environmental community, Lou. All right. Thank you very much, Casey. As always, we're awfully sensitive to those orthodoxies there. Thanks very much, Casey Wyant.